Thank you. Hello everyone. Resilience has probably never been as much in the global limelight as it is today. Hence this series of podcasts. This is Dheeraj Lal and I welcome you to the core resilience podcast brought to you by Continuity and Resilience. In this episode, we bring to you some thoughts from the world's first FPCI, Andrew Hiles. In my view, the father of BCM and certainly my personal BCM guru. Andrew has had a distinguished career spanning over 30 years, has written multiple books, and in 1999 was awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award. He's also been incorporated into the BC Hall of Fame by CPM Magazine in Washington, DC. The thoughts in this podcast were presented by Andrew some time ago, but his words still ring true. And Andrew gives us some interesting insights into an oft asked question. What is best practice and what's good practice? Are they the same? Are they different? If so, how? In this podcast, Andrew also covers the shape of things to come and how he sees business country supporting organizational residents. Andrew, over to you. The time has changed. We're now in a situation where BC is accepted increasingly as mainstream, except perhaps in some of the uh, larger family-run uh, companies and so on. But in the private sector companies generally, the tide has turned. We've seen these events like this grow and prosper. We've seen training increase from a number of sources, from core, from my company through IR here, from other institutions, other sources of training. And we've seen the training in, improve and a greater awareness and understanding of what business continuity is all about. So that's the encouraging uh, part of it all. So we're going to be striving for best practice, aren't we? If we look back, though, best practice doesn't stand still. In the 1980s, nobody knew much about IT disaster recovery. In the 90s, it became mainstream. The birth of enterprise risk management, which we heard about uh, at the forum here, the enterprise risk management was talked about but not done a lot. In the 2000s, governance and compliance requirements led the increase in business-oriented activity. We first started the business continuity user group, survived the first international business continuity user group, which I founded in 1996, 97, something like that. But that was strange. It was an odd thing to do. Yeah. Uh, in the 2000s, it became commonplace. And in the 2010s, we're talking about resilience. And it was interesting to hear the forum presentation here about all aspects of risk now are being addressed. And the debate is not so much about what you address and what you don't address, but about whose responsibility it is to address them. But what worked for mainframes in 1990 doesn't exactly work in a virtualized world today, where we have cloud computing, the growth of bring your own device, the Internet of Things, the Internet of Things botnet, and so on. Cyber attacks on a large level. Uh, mobile computing location-related applications, and so on. So things don't stand still. Best practice doesn't stand still. We move on. Best practice. Says who? Who says it's best practice? What's best practice for you may not be best practice for me. What's best practice for me may not be best practice for you. So who decides what's best practice? It's certainly not really the standards and guidelines that are produced because standards and guidelines are produced largely by committees and you know the description of a camel, it's a horse designed by a committee. Yeah? So standards and guidelines tend to be the lowest common denominator that all of the members of the committee which uh, establish the standards are prepared to accept. They're good practice, I'm not denying that they're good practice, but are they best practice? And 
There are so many of them now. There are over 300 relevant standards in information security, in business continuity, in disaster recovery, risk management. Which of those 300 do we decide is our best practice and follow? Between 1995 and 2001, there was a handful of best practices or guidelines or requirements for disaster recovery and business continuity. And most of those were not explicit. There were guidance documents, there were implied requirements in law and legislation and in governance requirements, etc. But there was nothing really apart towards the end of that period from 1997, NFPA 1600 in the US, which was not a, a, a standard you can get certified to, or people did get certified to, you couldn't, it wasn't done. And it was mainly about emergency management. By emergency management, when you talk about emergency management in the US, you mean wide area disaster. Yeah. So even that, although it talked about continuity in different words, didn't really address continuity aspects. Between 2002 and 2004, that is after 9-11, we saw a whole bunch of stuff come into play. We saw governance reports following from the financial scandals of Enron, Parmalat, uh, and, and so on. Uh, we saw the, the increasing requirement for risk assessment by business, not necessarily just for BC, but risk assessment for governance. We saw the growth of the IT standards for control objectives for information technology requiring governance of IT, which included continuity aspects. We saw the growth of IT infrastructure library, which required continuity arrangements in place for information technology. Then, what's happened since then, since 2004? Well, we have another bunch of standards. And most of these things you see here are not just guidelines, they are standards. So you can, most of these things, you can get. Yeah, there, okay. Well, I guess where you're going, Andrew, is uh, lots of new standards and possibly the convergence. Lots and lots of standards, which is best practice. One of the problems with these standards as, as best practice is that they all use different language to talk about the same stuff, which doesn't help us and it confuses uh, the people we're trying to persuade. The industry doesn't seem to know what it's talking about. It uses different terminology. Some of it is contradictory and so on. But we've now seen the emergence of ISO 22301, which is rapidly gaining acceptance as glo globally as good practice, and associated with that, the IT disaster recovery standard of 27031. So we're now seeing more of a convergence on particular standards. And the main standards outside of the USA are 22301 and 27031. And in, within North America, and for companies who operate outside North America, who are based in North America, very often NFPA 1600. So we really are coming down to just two general standards, which are widely adopted. The Australians, of course, are a little bit different. But they always were, weren't they? So this is the other standard then, which gets updated. It's been going on since around 1995 now, when it was first uh, mooted, until now it's, it's gone through various versions. That establishes a common set of criteria for business continuity and, 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 and uh, resilience and recovery capability. But the emphasis in the US is still more towards area type disaster than site type disaster. We've got another standard here for IT service providers, which any of you running a data center, a resilient data center, should be looking at and seeing whether you comply with. So now we've got a standard both for the business, we've got one for IT, and we've got one for data centers and disaster recovery service providers here. All good practice. Then when we think about the information security standards, 
And the interesting conversation that there was here at the forum was how everything is coming together, and how things overlap. You can't, if you're in business continuity, you can't afford to um, ignore, for instance, the potential impact of cyber attacks on SCADA control systems uh, of, of plant and equipment, which are often not within the domain of IT, they're within the domain of the operational area of the company. So here's just a few of the standards here. They're planning 32 standards in that series, some of which are produced, some of which are in the pipeline. A lot, isn't it? Eh? Doesn't it doesn't stop there, because IT infrastructure library requires disaster recovery activities or continuity of service requirements. Um, and so that's good practice too. Control objectives for information technology, whereas ITIL is from IT coming up, if you like. It's, it's, it tells you IT professionals how to manage IT. COVID is from governance coming down. Fortunately, the two are merging in the middle into something consistent and common. But from a governance perspective, disaster recovery and business continuity requirements uh, are, are, are covered in COVID. So we've got even more good practice and standards. So what is best practice? Should you be aligning to a standard that is not necessarily getting certified to it, but following that practice, picking up the best pieces that suit you? Should you get certified to a standard? Are any of you certified to a recovery standard? Continue the standard? No? Well, lots of organizations are getting certified, but you have to ask what the payback is, because it's a lot of work and uh, it costs a lot of money, but you don't just get certified and that's it. You have to get audited every year, and that costs effort and money as well. So what's the payback for it? Now, if you happen to be a disaster recovery service provider, you've got a marketing payback for it. But for many organizations, there is not an obvious payback for that certification. And in constantly searching for the best, best practice, maybe we fail to implement good practice. And good practice does not necessarily rely on any particular standard. Good practice depends on following the principles of business continuity, which haven't changed really much, although the technology has, but the principles haven't changed since the 1990s. They're embedded in the Business Continuity Institute Good Practice Guide, for instance, which is more or less independent of most BC standards. That's good practice. You, don't, you can't get certified against that at the moment. Best practice is not just having a business continuity plan. Best practice is implementing a business continuity management system, just as you have quality of management systems and so on. It's a systematic approach of which business continuity planning is just a part. Business continuity, with all the rest of the, rest of the risk management disciplines that my colleagues here were talking about best practice is having a coherent, holistic approach to risk, a significant part of which, but not necessarily the most important or even the only part, is business continuity planning. What is happening is that increasingly we're going to see cyber threats. And the link between a physical destruction of equipment and cyber destruction of equipment is really Nothing. Eh? We, we still lost the equipment. So the linkage between security, especially information security and cyber security, and business continuity is, is going to grow and be more and more important. The linkage between enterprise risk management and security is going to be more and more important. The complexity that we deal with is going to increase and increase and increase. There's going to be all sorts of challenges arising from things like the Internet of Things and big data, version changes in software over which we have no control, software defects from major suppliers who, whose priority is not the same as ours. We're going to see challenges that we can't even Im imagine. So good practice in business continuity management is planning for the results, the consequences, the impacts of events. We can't possibly imagine what all those events are. 
will practice the principles will re remain the same as they were in the 1990s. The technology backdrop against which they operate will be completely different and we can't even imagine it. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Andrew. That was extremely, extremely insightful. Always a pleasure to hear you. As you correctly said, the principles of business country have not really changed. Good practices continue to be good practices. Best practices is the application of those good practices to get the best out of your BCM system. Even though you gave this talk quite some time ago, a lot of it rings true right even now. Uh, with that, uh, we bring this podcast, this episode to a close and we look forward to having you folks dial in for the next podcast. Till then, be good, be safe, be resilient. Thanks a lot. This is Dheeraj. Bye for now.